me make a couple of statements before I read this scripture. First, uh, uh, I appreciate Roger working with the children. No time spent with children is wasted. Seriously. Now, the scripture I have today is from Exodus, the 12th chapter, and it's a very small print, so I may have to do this to see it. But it tells the story of what Roger was talking to the children about. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron on the, in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, they shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in portions to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male, you may take it from the sheep or from the goat. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its heads, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning shall you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your lines girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt both human beings and animals. And all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord throughout your generation. You shall observe it as a, as a perpetual ordinance. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Amen. Thank you, Brother Johnson, for reading scripture for us this morning. I invite you to have your Bible open to that passage, if you will, to Exodus chapter 12. And let's go to God once again in prayer for the preaching of the word. Almighty, all-knowing and ever-present God, by your goodness and grace, we approach this divine appointment for the proclamation of your living word that so faithfully speaks to our condition Grant our ears to listen carefully to the voice of your spirit. Grant our eyes to see your kingdom at hand. And fill our hearts with courage to respond in joyful and faithful obedience. We pray in the name and to the glory of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 
that better? Thank you. I appreciate that. October 31st, May the 24th, December 24th. What, do all, what does all that mean? Think about what came to your mind, as I said, those dates. Some of those dates may mean something to you. Some of those may not. July the 4th. It's an easy one, right? The signing of the Declaration of Independence. Every year it rolls around, and what do we do? We celebrate. September the 11th. Another date. Numbers that quickly spark a memory of, of tragedy and um, a difficult day for us. A day when terrorists carried out attacks on the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. December the 7th. Those of some of you may remember that better than others, but that was what? The day that Japan attacked Pearl, attacked Pearl Harbor, right? Now, other dates. April the 26th. That, may, that date may not mean a whole lot to you, but that date means a whole lot to Katie and I, and that's our anniversary. Uh, just like last week, we had a special occasion for Lewis and Anna, 65 years. And what did we do? We celebrated, right? We got together and broke bread, had a meal to, to remember, right? November 30th, another date that may not mean a lot to you, but it means a lot to us, to Elijah. That's Elijah's birthday. And January 15th, Caleb's birthday. Every time those dates roll around, what do we do? We celebrate. And how do we celebrate? We eat, <laughs> right? <laughs> we eat all kinds of good stuff, right? Then there are other dates. October 31st, now you might, hold off just a minute, first thing that comes to your mind may not be exactly what I have in mind for this day, so you're probably thinking what, Halloween, right, yeah, yeah, Hallow's Eve, right, you realize also that day, October 31st, 1517 was a very important day in the history of the Protestant church, that was the day that Martin Luther on uh, his 95 thesis, his complaints on the church door at Wittenberg has sparked the beginning of the Protestant Reformation. The reason we are a church, a Methodist church, with part of the Protestant tradition is because of that day. And we're gonna, this year marks the 500th anniversary of that, so that's coming up. So October 31st, May the 24th, May the 24th. Again, that to ref maybe refresh your memory or um, to learn something. That day was an important day in the life of, of John Wesley. John Wesley being accredited for being the father of, of the Methodist movement. On that day, he would describe the fire of God came into his heart. And his heart was strangely warmed on that day. See, John Wesley had been searching and searching and, um, and wondering a lot about his relationship with God. And then that night he went to a meeting on a, a street called Aldersgate, in a place, and the, the lecture, there was a lecture that night. I know lectures don't really sound very exciting, do they? But he heard a, a lecture and the reading of the uh, preface to Romans. And then during the reading of that, he said all of a sudden he felt his heart strangely warmed that he knew in that moment that God loved him, even him. Do you have a memory like that today? Do you have a memory where you can say, you know what? There was a time something happened in my heart and I know that God loves me, even me. See, John Wesley didn't know whether or not God could love him. Maybe you're here today and you may be wondering that very question. Can God love me? I want to suggest today that today, September the 17th, may be a day for you to mark on your calendar as a day that hopefully you may know that today that yes, God loves you, even you. December 24th was another date that I threw out there. I know you're thinking, what, Christmas Eve, right? It is Christmas Eve. But December the 24th, 
1784 marked the beginning of the Methodist Church. That was the date that Thomas Coke and Francis Asbury and some others gathered at Lovely Lane Chapel. And John Wesley had given permission to, to ordain them as what were called superintendents to, to begin the work of the Methodist Church here in, in America. So for seven days, the people called Methodists got together and they prayed and the spirit moved and it gave birth to, to a movement that would sweep across the nation and, and because of their work and their witness to God, people would come to know Jesus. So as we look at this passage today, I want us to approach this passage, this old, old passage from, from Exodus with, with a, fresh, a fresh take on it to understand that, that as we read these stories, we're, these are much more than just stories of, of an old bygone day, something that, that God once did a long time ago. But what's important in this passage is as, as we look at the life of Moses and the life of God's people, is we see that God is up to something. God is, up, God is always up to something. Okay? And it is up to us today, as we look back on these stories, to ask ourselves, what is God up to today? You see, this passage was the institution of the Passover. Okay? For the Jewish people, this was a feast day. Uh, and this is one of the most important feasts because this became the first of what would be seven annual feasts, okay? See, they already had a weekly feast called Sabbath, okay? That's why, it's one reason why we gather every week, okay? Do you realize that? That's part of why we as the church have a weekly worship because the people of God had a weekly feast and a weekly celebration. And what is central to our worship? It's the table, the communion table. And what does our communion table say on it? Do in remembrance, in, in, in remembrance. I want to talk about that word this morning, about that word remembrance. You see, that's why God gave this meal to, to God's people, to refresh your memory with, with the Bible story. Okay, Last week, Brother Johnson spoke on hope, and I think that's, an appropriate message that it is very fitting between, between these, messages, these, these sermons on the life of God's people. Because hope is what it's all about. Hope is what Moses and the people of Israel had. Their hope in what God had promised them. So as we talk about this word remembrance, to refresh our memory, God spoke to Moses in a burning bush after miraculously saving Moses' life uh, in the Nile. There was a, an order that had went out to, to kill all the Hebrew boys. And Moses' Moses's mother, along with his sister, were brave enough to defy the order to put him in a, in a basket. And then Pharaoh's own daughter was the one that saw him and, and, and saved him. And then Moses grew up and ended up in exile because he was running for his life and in fear because he had murdered somebody. And it was while he was in exile in the wilderness, that God spoke to him through a burning bush and said, said, Moses, Moses, take off your shoes because where you're standing is holy ground. And then that day God gave Moses a call to, to, to go back to Pharaoh and to tell Pharaoh to release the people that were in slavery and in bondage, his own people. So as the story unfolds, Moses tried to make excuses. How many of us have tried to make excuses whenever we know God's telling us to do something? That's the first inclination, isn't it? But you know what? Thanks be to God. God doesn't let us stay in our excuses for too long. And that was true for Moses. So Moses' excuse was, well, I stutter. I can't speak. God said, that's all right. Let your brother speak for you. Go. So God told Moses, what do you have in your hand? You know, sometimes we just need to stop and see what is in our hand. What has God already given you? Because guess what? God has already given you everything you need to do whatever it is that God is calling you to do. 
So Moses said, I have a staff in my hand. So God said, okay, Moses, take that staff and go to Pharaoh. And as he did, he, he took that staff, and that staff became a serpent, formed a miracle in front of Pharaoh. But Pharaoh continued to refuse to listen to, to Moses. And why should I let you go? Um, I don't believe in your God. So God said, okay, Moses, go back and tell, tell Pharaoh that I'm going to turn the water into blood. So he did. And then Pharaoh said, okay, we can do that too. So he gathered his magicians, and his magicians were able to do the same thing. So he dismissed that. And thought, ah, that's, that's nothing too special. So then every time Moses would go back at the prompting of God, he would do a, another plague. So there were frogs and flies and, uh, and all of those things that, that came upon the people for, for the purpose of, of showing Pharaoh who is really in control. And every time Pharaoh's heart grew harder and harder until we get to this point in Scripture, and it's interesting that instead of just going on to the next plague, God takes a moment in Scripture and just pauses and institutes a gift for God's people for the purpose of remembering. That's the whole purpose of, of the Passover, is to remember. Because we, we read on in the chapter that it says... Whenever you do this with your children and your children ask, why do we do this? You will tell them. Because this is the day that God saved God's people and delivered us, delivered us from captivity. So it was, it was meant to be a remembrance. So I want to share this morning as we move forward with, with the series. And the series is called Returning to the Image of God. We reflect back on the Old Testament and Genesis. We remember that God created us in God's image. But because of sin and the fall, we have gotten away from God's image. And God's plan of salvation for us is to return us back to that image of God, often called the Imago Dei. So we are returning to what God created us to be and the way God intended our lives to be. So we're, we're looking at this passage through with that understanding in mind. And the whole point of remembrance, as we look at what the Passover means, it's to remember the past, it's to remember the past, so that we have present, so that we have purpose in the present, and hope for the future, okay? It's not just remembering the past, it's to remember, oh, look, remember what happened a long time ago? You see, sometimes we have a tendency, don't we, to live in the past? And look back and say, yeah, remember what happened when? Oh, wasn't it so good then? But you see, if we, if we stay there, then, then, we, then we lose out on what God's doing today. See, God's not just a God of the, the past, but God of the present and the future. And that's what we see in the Passover is that God enters, enters our time. So first, we return to the image of God through our remembrance of time. And that's your blank. Through our remembrance of time. If you have your Bible, look with me in the second verse of this 12th chapter. And it says, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. So, so God told them, this, this feast, which, by the way, is, around spring, is for us around the month of April. Okay, every spring, on this day, you're to have this feast. And this is the beginning of, of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family. A lamb for each, each household. See, the Greeks had two concepts of time uh, called chronos and, and kairos time, okay? Chronos time is where we get the word chronological, okay? It's, it's linear time. It's, it's time that you can put on a calendar, like we have the clock that tells us what time it is. By the way, it's not time to leave just yet, so stay with me. Then there's kairos time, which means um, one way to describe it is pregnant time or expected time. Time that it's time to do something, time to move. The time is now uh, to, to do something. And see, that, and that's what we remember. We remember that the time that God is calling us to do something, and that God is doing something in the now. So we return to the image of God through our remembrance of time. Secondly, we return to the image of God through our remembrance of community. Look in verse 4. Isn't it interesting? This verse is... You know, 
as often as I read this verse, for, for some reason this verse stood out to me this time in a different way. Verse 4, if a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. You know, we need each other. God created us to live in community with one another. And we see that in the, in the Passover. So that if, if, if one household was too small to, to provide a lamb, another family would provide for them. And they would divide it equally so that everyone had plenty. We see that in Acts, don't we? At the beginning of whenever the church is born, at Pentecost, one of the first things the believers did was they sold everything they had and they divided it among themselves so that no one went without. And thirdly, we return to the image of God through our remembrance of mission. Our remembrance of mission. Verse 11 describes the way that the people of God were to eat this meal. They were to eat it standing up with, with their loins girded, with their pants on, okay, ready to go, ready to move. All right? and we see that God always has his people on the verge of movement. There is movement that God calls us to, and it's, it's God's movement, it's not ours. I've heard it put this way, that it's not that the church has a mission, but it's that the mission of God has a church. Let me say that again. It, it's not that the church has a mission, okay? We, we don't make up our own mission, see? God already has a mission. His mission is salvation for the world, but it's the church that implements the mission of God. There's, there's a big difference in that. I hope that that hits home with you today. So as, as we look at this passage, I want to close with this. That we return to the image of God through our remembrance of time, community, and mission. Today is the time. This is the hour. I want you today to hear the invitation, and if you have a decision to make, I want you to decide today to accept Christ as your Savior. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.